Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I want to show you the kit that I packed and carried in the primitive bushcraft pack on our last winter survival camping trip. Stay tuned. So this is the gear that I carried when I went on the backpacking trip and uh, have my bedroll just on a strap around my shoulder, of course. I have my haversack, I have my belt on, I'll show you that here in a little bit, and then of course the backpack. And I'm going to show you what's inside and what I carried on this trip. So let's get into that. So the first layer that I have on me is this large two inch belt and with a hand forged buckle. I bought this a long time ago. Uh, it goes with my buckskins and uh, the rest of my outfit that I wore. But uh, this is a really great belt. Uh, of course, first layer is the things I wanna keep on me. And uh, I have a couple of pouches here and I'm gonna zoom in on that and I'll give you uh, a little bit of a rundown of what I carried in this on my person. So my right side, I carried this pouch and this is a elk skin pouch with some uh, elk hair and then some elk teeth attached to it and this is a soft leather pouch and this of course inside had my cell phone uh, also uh, toward the end I carried uh, the only knife that uh, fixed blade knife that I took with me on the trip uh, of course this also doubles as a flint striker I also carried my 18th century folding knife which of course has the locking ring that you pull for closing the blade. And also in this pouch, I carried uh, my extra key uh, on a stick uh, attached so that I wouldn't lose it so I could have access to my vehicle. And this side, this pouch, which has a deer antler toggle, I just carried my wallet so that I would have all of my important documents and things with me as I traveled. The next item that I carried on my right side across my shoulder is my haversack and uh, it leather with a hand forged iron buckle and a deer antler button. Inside I carried a multitude of items. Uh, first of course is my Stitch Gear Outfitters Tinder pouch and in this Tinder pouch it's waterproof and it's a really great uh, design, but uh, it was actually designed by Dan Lutz, who of course is a trapper friend of mine, and I've got some videos of him. Uh, you can look him up, I'll make sure and put a link up here. But anyway, inside here, I carried my flint and steel kit, which has a deer antler toggle, and actually this little pack was made from two shoe tongues. I bought a pair of old shoes from the secondhand store, cut the tongues out, it was the right kind of leather, stitched it together. And in here, of course, is my uh, flint and steel kit with char cloth. And uh, you've seen me use that on other videos. Also inside, I had some dried grasses. And in the very bottom, some small twigs broke into size to fit. And that all rode inside of that. The next item that I have in this excellent wax canvas pouch made by J. Hercules from Possum Pouch Soft Goods, I have my stainless steel water bottle. I know it's not vintage, but it does a really good job and I've used it for years. So I have that. Uh, also my cup and in the bottom of the cup just some extra shop towels for cleaning up. And of course this nests in together carried in like this. Next, and of course in this are items that I want to keep close to me. Uh, my hygiene stuff is very important to have. And so in this I had some small rolls of toilet paper and some cleaning wipes. And I always try to keep this separate and also handy because you never know when you might need that. Also, I carried my repair kit and this little leather pouch and in this I have a roll here on just a stick of the artificial sinew with two needles that's in case I needed to repair the pack I didn't have to repair it it held up well but just in case good to have that with you also had my 
vintage scissors here and uh, just inside of a cork to protect the tip of course from poking through my gear. Also a thimble, very important to have if you do any kind of stitching uh, by hand. Of course my vintage awl that you have seen and use this for uh, making holes in the leather. And last but not least have an extra cork just in case I lost the cork from the rest of my sewing gear. Next, just a partial roll of uh, number 18 bank line because that's useful for so many things in camp. And then finally, just a simple sharpening stone wrapped up in a piece of soft leather that I cut off from an old shirt. And that's pretty much what was in my haversack for this trip. The next item that I carried was my blanket roll. Now there's two thoughts on the blanket roll. You can either carry your blanket on the outside and your shelter on the inside. That will be very important if you're going to be around water or snow, things like that. On the other hand, there's always a possibility of putting a hole in your shelter. So again, depending on the weather, depending on what you're doing, uh, I chose to carry my shelter inside of my blanket because I can always stitch this up if something happens with my repair kit. So let's look inside here and I'll show you what I have. These are just leather straps, some buckles, and inside, just rolled up, of course with the line rolled up in the very center. And without unrolling the whole thing, I had my tent smiths tarp inside. This is an eight foot by eight foot and my queen size blanket inside. So I had two wool blankets folded in and then of course my tent smith. So that's all that I carried inside my blanket roll. And even though the weather got pretty chilly, uh, it was down in the 20s Fahrenheit. Uh, I think it got down to 20 six or 27. Uh, these two wool blankets and uh, the tarp of course kept me dry and kept me warm. And of course the idea is is the two wool blankets are better than just one thick one because you're trapping more air between the layers hence you stay warmer. So for the pack itself this is what it looked like. Of course you've seen that side of it but this is what it looked like from the front and on the very outside of the pack lashed with leather cords. I have my heavy wool anorak and uh, this is just an excellent and warm item. It's just simply folded up and uh, you've seen me wear this in other videos but it is made by Boreal Mountain Anoraks, uh, made, handmade in Canada. So it's got a great drawstring hood combination. Uh, I did buy the additional pouch and pocket in the front and in these pockets up here in the front I like to carry just some wool military uh, gloves. These are the wool liners and I find that that keeps my hands nice and warm. Then I also will store my hat inside depending on what kind of hat I'm wearing. Uh, some kind of a toque or a beanie and that works really well. So I just had this lashed to the outside because it was obviously too hot to wear it while I'm hiking. I'm burning a lot of calories, throwing off a lot of heat. Don't want to get too sweaty but easily accessible on the outside of my pack should I stop and get cold and uh, just easy lash on and lash off. So it's good to keep that handy on the outside. On the very top of my pack and tied with some more of the uh, deer skin is just a reindeer hide. And uh, this reindeer hide was what I slept on for my ground mat. I uh, had some uh, leaves and also uh, of course a little bit of debris down there. It was a lot of uh, very spongy ground cover and so I had that but I also went ahead and uh, put a bow bed down and then laid on this. And this is a pretty good size mat. It's uh, a little shorter than I am by about a foot. It's about five feet long uh, roughly but it's very light. It doesn't weigh much but nice thick fur and uh, really uh, beautifully tanned on the inside. Got this nice white skin inside. 
And you can see it's, it's definitely wide enough for me and uh, it doesn't weigh much, but it really, along with the bow bed, it kept me quite warm. So now we have the pack and on the outside is my tomahawk. Of course, I just attach it down here at the bottom with some lacing and uh, that is easily undone. I guess you can even undo it with one hand, as you can see. And uh, it's just tied with a bow like you would tie your shoes. So once we get that undone here, and we just wrap that one over and one under, and then tie it, pull the flap up, and we can easily access the tomahawk. And uh, this is the only wood getting tool that I used for the trip. I did not take a saw. And I'll tell you what, it makes a big difference when all you have is a tomahawk as opposed to being used to a silky saw. But it did the job and I stayed warm enough. Going inside the pack, I have a canvas bag, the drawstring. And in here, I carried some uh, various things, New Testament for reading and devotionals. Also, I carried a uh, small first aid kit and this is just something that I put together so that I would have some basic first aid items with me and uh, it works works really well uh, this is actually a can of homemade salve by Jamie Schmotzer who's a good friend of mine and a fellow bushcrafter I also carried a tourniquet this is one of the cat tourniquets and uh, just in case someone got a major injury again we're working with saws and axes want to have something just in case and down in the very bottom is my toiletries bag. And I try to travel real light. The uh, travel uh, deodorant is very good to have. Also the travel size toothpaste. In a separate bag, I have a toothbrush. And you always want to keep this separate so you don't get everything wet. And uh, make sure, of course, you dry everything thoroughly when you get back from your trip. But just a toothbrush and a case, and I cut the end off to make it shorter. I have other toothbrushes that fold, and there's all kinds of stuff, but I just happened to put this one in the kit. Also, dental floss. It can be used for repairs, but sometimes you get something stuck in your teeth, and it's just nice to have dental floss uh, along with you. Also, a uh, Civil War type era mirror. Again, this is very important in case you would uh, cut yourself in a place that you couldn't see easily, or if you get something in your eye, uh, it's always good to have a mirror with you. Next, I have another stainless steel one quart canteen. And of course, it's always good to have something you can boil and carry water in. And uh, I would just want to make sure that I had plenty with me. And believe me, it came in very, very handy. Our next item that we carry is a oil skin haversack. And in the very top pocket of this haversack, I have a 55 gallon trash bag. I didn't use it, but I had it in case we got a lot of rain and snow and I wanted to be able to carry it so I could cover my backpack with it. Uh, there's 101 uses for a garbage bag. So this was actually my food kit bag. This was so I could hang it from a tree. Uh, there's our bear in the area, black bear, and they recommend that you hang your food up. Um, I also had a pound of bacon with this, well, which I ate, so it's not in the pack, and also about a quarter of a stick of butter. But I had in here some hot chocolate and some Kool-Aid mix. I also had one of these old Coleman, uh, just a mountain man stew, very lightweight. That was a backup meal just in case. I also carried... A bottle with a cork in it of sweet oil. This is olive oil and of course this is what I use for cooking and frying and uh, comes in very very handy and it's always a good thing to have. I, I double bag it so as to keep it from breaking and I'll always make sure of course that that cork is tightly pushed down before I pack it away because the last thing I want to do is open it up and find out that it's leaked on things. Also one of the things that I carried for my food is I had some uh, trail bread that I made here. This is just some hardtack, very hard, 
And I had about five pieces of these and I ate them, of course, with my meal. I also had extra black beans and rice. I did not use that one. And then in this bag, I have oatmeal and also buckwheat. And this is enough for two breakfasts. Next, I have my steel frying pan and I use that for my bacon as well as I had some uh, potatoes that I sliced up and fried in the olive oil. And in this leather drawstring pouch, several items. Uh, first of all, I carried my headlamp. You've seen me do a review on this perhaps, you've been around the channel for a while, but this is a fantastic headlamp. It goes in this night eyes band, it's adjustable, goes around your head. It has a, two different settings, a high and a low, and this glows in the dark. And this is a cap that goes on top of a nine volt battery, which becomes the body and it just slides inside this night eyes. It works super well and has an extremely long battery life. Uh, with a lithium battery, uh, you get like 900 hours on low with one battery, so it's fantastic. I also carried an extra battery just in case. Didn't need it, but I like having a backup battery. I also carried in this other plastic bag, salt and pepper, very good, a little bit of garlic salt, some napkins. I did have some hand warmers with me. I did not use them. It's always good to have that just in case. Uh, a little sugar packet in case I wanted to uh, add that to some tea. I also carried this match that you can use, of course, with a flint and steel end is charred. Many of you familiar with the 18th century know what this is. So that was good to have along. And then also because I had my blankets, I also had my blanket pin, which is a brass pin, and carry my cork on it. And if you want to know how to make your own blanket pin out of a clothes hanger, I could put a link to it right up here. I have a video from several years ago on how to do that. The next item that I carried was an extra shirt, just rolled up, and I used this for a pillow. And inside the shirt, couple of heavy extra wool socks, pairs of wool socks, a hand knit uh, cap, fingerless gloves, and a wool scarf. And all of that of course just to keep me warm at night or if the weather turned really really cold. The next item that I always carry, this really will save your life. This is a hooded poncho made by the Grabber Company, the space blanket, but it's got a hood and it's got pockets for your hands to go into. And this right here, if you happen to get hypothermia, uh, this can save your life. It's a super awesome thing in the morning around a campfire. Uh, it also, of course, doubles as a rain poncho. So this was my rain poncho that I took for the trip. The next item that I have, also in this larger pouch, made by J. Hercules at the uh, Possum Soft Goods, is my cook pot. On the side, just have a standard tablespoon. And of course, this is my zebra pot, and I modified the handle a little bit. Now it fits flush. But inside, I have some beef jerky. Also, a cup and a half of just plain white rice and about a cup and a quarter of dried pinto beans. I also carried two potatoes with aluminum foil. Uh, one I cooked in the fire with the aluminum foil, the other I sliced up and used uh, along with my bacon for breakfast. And that was it inside the pot. Next, I carried some extra line with me. I didn't end up using it, I just used the bank line, but I wanted different size cords just in case uh, the place we got, I needed to have some extra tie outs, but of course, just some cotton and some uh, jute. And this, like I said, didn't have to use it, but it's always good to have plenty of cord with you. The next thing I had was I had a little bit of this extra deer skin for doing repairs, as well as this little bit of paracord and last but not least, a pair of elk hide moccasins in case my feet got wet or I just wanted something to walk around camp and get up in the middle of the night, have to take care of business. So just light, they pack real flat 
and uh, they were great for an extra pair of footwear. And that's it. That's what I carried. I'm going to lay all of it out uh, as best I can and try to give you a finished shot of what all looks like kind of put together uh, on one pile on the table. And here we have the kit all kind of stacked together. You get an idea of what it looked like and what I carried. And the one thing to remember is when you go with primitive style stuff, it's not as lightweight as some of the gear that we're used to in our modern world, but it's durable, it works, and it'll keep on working for a long time. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, you'll also find our Patreon link, which is where you can donate to support the channel. You can also find our Spring Link, which is where you can buy Great Waypoint Survival branded merchandise. The proceeds from that go to help support us as well, and also the ongoing research that we do to bring you great video content. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos, and we'll talk to you next time. <music>